What's the bit of luck on our live link we might have? Dan Brantingham, who's the CEO of uh, Burger Batch, uh, fantastic restaurant chain in Richmond, Virginia, in the United States of America. The Burger Batch is a restaurant, and they're dealing in fantastic beers these days. Um, amongst the many, you can actually buy a mild beer there, but um, but also they uh, they work very closely with a fantastic, uh, all natural, grass fed New Zealand beef and lamb. So, so, and we're going to hear a little bit about the Burger Batch story and how um, how our produce fits into um, into the success that they're having. Um, hello, Dan. Can you hear me? I can. Good morning. That that's fantastic. That's great. I can see you on my little screen. So, so I'm a sheep and beef farmer from uh, from the North Island, New Zealand, Dan. So. So in, in, in about 20 seconds, I'm going to hand over to you to listen to your fantastic presentation. Uh, we've got a bunch of farmers here and industry people. And, um, and um, I guess over the, the next, what uh, we, we have you for, I think about half an hour. And then if we've got a bit of time, we must, might ask you a few questions at the end. Yeah, perfect. Uh, over to you, Dan. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, good morning. I'd like to thank Mel Fulton and Jason Griffin for the invitation. Uh, I had the privilege to meet Mel when she was here, I believe about a year ago, and um, I was invited to come last year. So my only regret is that I'm not there with you, but um, I know you can see my screen. I'm standing in the back of one of our conference rooms in Richmond. But uh, I'm happy to get underway, and, and uh, as the uh, presenter said, uh, I'll field questions along the way at the end, whatever suits you. So here we go, Burger Batch. Our history, what you see right there is the very first Burger Batch. Uh, that location is in Richmond. Richmond actually has about a million people. Uh, the city, you're correct, the city's about 200,000, but the three counties surrounding area makes up right at 1 million. So it's a good sized city. It's the capital of, of Virginia, and it was the capital of our Confederacy. Uh, this particular building is small. I, I think you're on metric, but this is 1,700 square feet. We have 74 seats, including the seats you see there at the bar. One of the interesting things about this location is it opened in February 2012. The last three years in a row, this little location has done over 2.5 million in sales, which is quite amazing given the size and scope of, of the building. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the inspiration. Michael Rips, the founder. Uh, I'm actually standing in an office that uh, his father has and he's had for 40 years. Michael's the oldest of four brothers. All of them came up in the restaurant industry. Dick Rip, the patriarch of the family, is a very successful Arby's franchisee. He has 20 Arby's here in Richmond. And uh, along the way, the kids have all come through the business. They've all learned the business. Michael was, uh, you might say affectionately, the black sheep being the oldest brother, but uh, Michael jumped out on his own early on in the early 90s and founded several very, very successful restaurants. Probably the most successful up to the batch was Havana 59, which was really a neat concept and he did very well. But uh, Michael had been traveling and has been traveling back to New Zealand for years to visit his son. So Michael's made numerous trips over there. He's visited farmers, uh, he's been to the oyster festivals, He's fallen in love with the culture, and uh, he really is the person that came up with the idea for the concept. Uh, Michael and I have known each other a very long time. When he had made a decision to grow and scale the concept, uh, he asked me if I might be interested, and uh, his father, who I've known a long time and worked with before, asked me if I'd be interested. So I was quite pleased to say yes and got involved late in uh, 2012. <clears throat> Mission statement, I mean, this really, this really says it all. We are a New Zealand-inspired gastro pub, bringing you the very best of, of New Zealand's livestock and agriculture. This is a look at uh, the third batch. This batch is actually in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, Durham is in an area called the Research Triangle. It's comprised of Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. And it's really known for its tech center and a lot of the major colleges that are in the Durham area. So it's a, 
for lack of a better term, it's a very cool area with a lot of neat people. But uh, you see the name. In Richmond, it's Burger Bach. Well, frankly, everywhere it's Burger Bach until we explain to them what a batch is. But uh, I don't need to tell you what the batch means. But even at the table, we'll celebrate the holiday lifestyle of New Zealand. We talk about the batch being, where do you go with your family? Where do you go with your friends? Where do you go to get away? In fact, one of our taglines is, are we there yet? So the batch and the kind of that whole laid back lifestyle is really a central theme of what we do. The gastronomical pub, uh, public house or gastro pub, some of you may know that was really coined in the early 90s in London. Uh, there was a pub called Eagle Pub, it was 1991. And as some of you may know, the British uh, are pretty well known for their ability to drink. And so you had a lot of drinking establishments and pubs. But the idea then in uh, London was, hey, why don't we put a restaurant in this pub? Why don't we actually focus on making good food? And uh, so it wasn't just cold foods and, and unprepared foods. Our products, you know, what do we do? Uh, we certainly lead with the premium gourmet burgers. Uh, I think that you'll see as I continue through this presentation, it really is about the beef and the lamb. However, uh, also in our burger category, we have chicken. We use a fresh, organic, hormone-free chicken. It's actually 100% thigh meat. But we also grind that fresh and hand patty that. In addition, uh, an area and a segment that makes us different than, say, a typical burger place is we have sautéed seafood. Uh, we get fresh sautéed uh, wild-caught shrimp. We do Prince Edward Island mussels. And uh, then right below that, you'll see we do a raw bar. And I'll explain that more as we move through the presentation. Uh, fresh cut fries, we do have fryers. The only thing that goes into them are, are these potatoes. Uh, I will tell you while I'm thinking about it because I couldn't get my notes page up. Uh, I'm working on the sweet potato wedges. I believe you call them Kimura or Kimura chips. So that's, that's something that I hope is in our future. Batch made dipping sauces, that's quite different. When we've had some Kiwis come in, they say, you know, that's something we don't really do much of, but we offer 12 to 14 dipping sauces when you order the fries. And uh, so that's quite a nice addition to, to the menu. We make them all from scratch in house. We make our own mayonnaise with free range eggs. Uh, fresh salads and small plates. We do have a nice salad section. I'd be lying to you if I said people come to Burger Batch for salads because they don't, but we do manage to sell a few. Uh, the small plates and the sides. The uh, sides, we have a lot of very healthy choices. We have kale, we have spinach, we have broccoli, we have fruit cups. So we have a lot of good choices besides if you're not in the mood to have uh, fries. Craft beers on tap. I don't think I need to tell you how popular the craft beer segment is. I'm sure it's, it's wildly popular here. Uh, the craft beer scene is on fire. If you're in the hospitality business, uh, the craft beer scene is something you need to make a part of your concept if you want to be successful. We have 30 beers on tap and wherever we're located, right now with three locations, uh, we try to feature as many of, of the local and regional beers as we can. Uh, Southern Hemisphere Wines, this is another brand differentiator. Uh, we only serve wines from New Zealand, from Australia, and from South Africa. We do carry from time to time Malbec uh, from Argentina and maybe Carmenere or a couple of Chilean wines as they stay true to that whole Southern Hemisphere, but that's the only place we go for the wines. And then finally, the handcrafted cocktails. Um, and I'll explain that evolution as I move through a little bit later on. Made fresh daily, here's an example of some of those dipping sauces. Uh, we make them all. The only one we don't make is organic ketchup, which is all we use. But uh, that's a large fry. When you get a large fry burger batch, you get a choice of two sides, one with a small. You can kind of mix and match them. But uh, people have a lot of fun with these sauces, and they're really quite good. Uh, this is a shot back in Durham you can see the raw bar display. And once again, it, it's very important in our industry 
that you do differentiate the brand, you're able to defend the brand. And uh, I'm gonna come into that a little bit further down the road. But uh, here's an example of our fresh oyster display. Uh, we shuck oysters every day. We do not start shucking the oysters until four o'clock in the afternoon. On a busy day, or if we're doing some type of a oyster takeover or promotion, uh, we've shucked a thousand oysters in a day which is pretty amazing when you're a burger place with 70 to 80 seats. Our menu, I would draw your attention, this is just an excerpt from the menu, but I would draw your attention to the left side. You see the New Zealand all natural grass fed. I mean, that's, that's the backbone of who we are, what we do. But you see we have a gluten-free bun. We have a lettuce wrap option. Uh, some people don't get a bun at all. But you'll also notice that all the burgers are served automatically with fre uh, fresh mixed salad with a four herb vinaigrette. The salad's fabulous. I mean, our side salad, it's really good enough to go in and just eat the salad. But we don't do that. You can see several of the names here, Aucklander, Wellington, East Coast, West Coast. Uh, and then on the bottom right, or at least my bottom right, you'll see North Lamb, South Lamb, and Queenstown. Those are the only three burgers that we feature with lamb, and uh, that's gonna impress you when I get to some numbers later on. The title of, uh, of this presentation is Why New Zealand? Uh, the inspiration for the brand clearly came from Michael's numerous trips coming over just to enjoy the country, to enjoy the culture, to enjoy the people. The Right Honorable Michael Moore, your former ambassador, former PM, he's been to the batch a couple times. Anyway, he came in and loved the lamb. He, uh, he thought the lamb was terrific. We've done a really good job with the lamb, and I'll get into those numbers. Uh, including silver ferns, we also use Southern Hemisphere wines. Uh, from New Zealand, Alan Scott has been a friend and been in numerous times when he's in the U.S. Uh, we continue to use Spy and Oyster, Withering Hills. Curie Hills also pictured here. Uh, Judith Fowler's been to the restaurant many times. That may be the best red wine, uh, at least of its kind. It's a Bordeaux blend, but it's terrific wine. We have that on our reserve list. Other New Zealand products, you see the butter, the Fonterra cheeses. Uh, we've been doing quite nicely with Steinlager. We're disappointed they pulled out of the U.S. market uh, within the past year. Manuka honey is part of our menu. Uh, we use it in quite a few of our, our sauces, a couple of our burgers. Um, and uh, 42 Below was our original single spirit until we expanded that. But uh, we've struggled a little bit with getting some of the distribution on the spirit side. Stolen Rum is also a New Zealand based, New Zealand made rum uh, that we can't yet get distribution for on the East Coast. And then Moa Beer, uh, founded by Josh Scott, Alan's son, We've done a quite good job with the Moa beer, but we struggle from uh, time to time with distribution. So we're hoping to continue to build that supplier pipeline. What makes uh, Burger Batch different? You guys, uh, the New Zealand influence. It is important when you're competing in the restaurant industry to be different, to be able to differentiate and defend the brand. We compete broadly in what's called the better burger market. I'll, I'll illustrate that in a moment. What we're trying to do is carve out our own niche and be the better for you burger guy uh, based on our connections and our supplies with New Zealand. We have great unit economics. If you're gonna grow, if you're gonna scale, you have to have those. Uh, we've got a few investors and, and the returns have been amazing, I think beyond everyone's expectation. And finally, and most importantly, is talented people. We've got the products, thanks to all of you in that room. We've got the best products and the highest quality. Culture, I could talk to you for a long time about culture, I won't because we're a little behind, but our four pillars, our values are positive attitude, communication, teamwork, and community. These are the, the things that we stand on top of. Uh, communicating is critical to us, the teamwork element's critical to us. Being in the community, in a new community, we support Two causes always, we always say yes to cancer research and kids. And of course the cancer is uh, in memoriam of Michael as well. How we compete here in America, you know, I look at it as four segments. QSR is just a fancy term for a quick serve restaurant, McDonald's, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Arby's, KFC, many, many more. 
limited serve or fast casual is Chipotle and Panera and people like that. You go to the counter, you pay at the counter, and they either call your name or somebody will run it to you or they'll give you a number. We compete, the batch competes in casual dining, excuse me, casual dining. We're in there with a lot of the big boys. You see Outback and Buffalo Wild Wings, Olive Garden, Bonefish, Maggiano's. Casual dining simply means we compete where you're generally greeted at the door. When you're sat, somebody will come and take your order. You have bartenders. So it's a little bit more of a service element. And then the top end, of course, is fine dining. If you look at our fine dining, the national chains, you see Ruth's Chris, Morton's, Fleming's, Del Frisco's, even McCormick and Schmick. What do they all have in common? The fine dining guys all have in common, steak and a potato. What do we eat over here? Steak and a potato. What is burger batch? Meat and a potato, burger and a potato. I can tell you long after the rapture comes, people are still gonna be eating burgers and fries in, in the US and they're always gonna be eating steak and a potato. Uh, who is our consumer? Uh, we've identified this, we've done some workshops. Our consumers food educated, you know, they're paying attention to what we're doing. They understand the attention to detail. They understand that we're sourcing what we believe is the highest quality, sustainably farmed uh, beef and lamb in the country. We grind every day. We use three cuts. We're grinding chuck, we're grinding rib, we're grinding brisket. And because of the leanness and the quality of your meat, we even import black Angus fat. There are adventurers, people looking for new places, new flavors. Our flavor contrasts, they're unmatched. I've been doing this 33 years. There's no one in the industry in the US who has the flavor compositions that we have in those burgers. Uh, people are committed. You see the intelligent indulgers, people that are looking to eat well and eat healthy. Who isn't our consumer? People that stick to the basics, people that are picky. Some of the people sitting at your table probably. <laughs> That's a joke. Not health conscious, uh, into the routine. Those are generally not the batch users. The batch users are people that get it. They just get it. They get what we're doing. They get why we're doing it. They get our commit commitment to this whole sustainable, socially responsible, environmentally responsible sourcing. <clears throat> Brand growth. Uh, you can see here, I hope you can see. Are you still there? Can you still hear me? Good, I hope so. Um, you can see here, there's a bull on the back wall. That is a life-size picture of Emperor. Some of you might know him, some of you, one of you might have even owned him, but that is a life-size bull of a New Zealand uh, animal that our artist did about 27,000 handmade stones. You can't really see that he did that mosaic with the stones, but uh, it's an interesting piece that we do in each store. How do we plan to keep growing? Uh, it's very simple. You do it with people. We've got a great team. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, we have young people leading young people. We have more young and talented people in this organization than any company I've ever uh, been a part of. Where do you come in? The honest ingredients. It's all natural. It's innovative. What we're doing with it, uh, people are really resonating to. We've trademarked Intelligent Indulgence Workshops. What that means is uh, my commitment in 2016 is we do workshops in all of our batches every two weeks. We continue to train. We have classes on how to cook a perfect burger, uh, how to toast a perfect bun, perfect fries, workshops on wine pairings, how do you pair wine and food, what is beer, all the way through. Uh, we even talk about sanitation and chemicals and cleaning. Finally, uh, being involved in the community, we're actively in the community. We talked earlier about cancer. It's something that we're going to continue to be a part of, but uh, people are really excited about seeing us getting involved. And finally, I mean, really our aspiration is to continue to be the doorway for New Zealand. You know, we've had some bumper stickers. I ate in New Zealand in Richmond. Uh, we're very proud of, at this point, being the only Kiwi-driven hospitality concept in the country. Uh, we do cater to health conscious people who understand that uh, eating responsibly doesn't mean you have to sacrifice things. Beef and lamb, I don't know if you heard me earlier because I kept talking, but uh, beef and lamb are 50 cents on our dollar. People are coming to Burger Batch not because there's a flat screen or not necessarily because we have 30 beers. They're coming there to eat, and they're coming there to eat New Zealand beef and New Zealand lamb. We also have seafood and chicken. You've seen some of those photos. I talked a little bit about salads and sides. 
You see that bar beverage number, that's a combination of beer, spirits, and wine. You cannot achieve those type of, of bar beverage numbers if you're not competing in that casual segment I talked about a moment ago. Uh, if you're a QSR, you don't have spirits. If you're a fast casual, a lot of them will carry beer, maybe a wine, but nobody buys it because it's just not an environment that's conducive to that. So when you have full serve, you have a chance to have a little bit more of a bar program. So I'm proud of that number. Uh, fries are about 13% of what we do. And I think I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you heard it or not, but we go through about 500 pounds a week per store of beef and 175 pounds a week uh, of lamb uh, per store. You can run those numbers out, they're pretty attractive. Uh, letting the world in, of course, who isn't involved in social media? We've got a social media team. I've got uh, a couple of those gals here I'm gonna introduce at the end. Uh, but we've done a great job connecting with all the, the things that you know, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. Uh, keeping up with our reviews, you know, I'm not going to read these, uh, but we do also, what do you think, comment cards. We solicit and build a database, and I think, uh, I mean, now it's up to several thousand people, so we're staying in touch. And also, it's not just to hear, you know, what we hope are very good and positive comments. We, we want to get feedback. We want to know what people think and what people recommend. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we still hear you. Good. All right, we're almost to the finish line. Uh, if you look at the tree here, we're growing. Um, GFB1 is Carytown that opened in 12. GFB2 is Short Pump. GFB stands for Grass-Fed Beef. Uh, GFB3 is Durham. GFB4 is Midlothian. It's under construction. It's a beautiful building, standalone. GFB5 is Charlottesville, down in the bottom left. GFB6 is Fredericksburg. We've already signed that lease. So. You can see that we're on a growth trajectory. I might also add, uh, for some of you who are not Baptist preachers kids like me, that uh, GFB has also been known to stand for great, you can fill in the blanks. Um, our roots are still in New Zealand. These are names of, of just, you know, kind of award-winning sandwiches. The Auckland or the Wellington, the South Lamb, the East Coast, the Queenstown, the Kiwi Chick. You can see Chipotle barbecue, jalapeno remoulade, uncured bacon, New Zealand uh, organic cheese. Uh, people, people love this, and they absolutely love it. Awards, uh, we started in 12, we won a lot of stuff. Uh, top new restaurant, 2013, best burger, best burger joint, best burger buns, best place to eat everywhere, uh, excuse me, every week. Best burgers in the South, best burger pairings, etc. Uh, 2014, we ran the table again, 2015, same awards, only now we're getting the awards in, in new locations. The Duke Chronicle is Duke University. We're very pleased that uh, those very smart kids down in Durham uh, recognized us as the best burger. And once again, uh, we don't believe that healthy is, uh, is not a flavor and it shouldn't be boring. There's nothing boring about what we're doing. Also, you can see those roles. Uh, that's a significant part of what we do, having a, a good roll and bun recipe, and that also comes with grass-fed butter. Uh, I coined, we coined intelligent indulgence. That's what we think you're doing when you come to Burger Batch. Uh, you don't have to make sacrifices to eat healthy. You don't have to make sacrifices to kind of scratch that burger craving, uh, and you can do that guilt-free. I'm down to my last slide. I think you can still see me. I'm gonna have Elise come in here and read this menu that she was given. This, this is Elise, she's our uh, communications director, also my daughter. Come here, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Tell me what it says. So we um, have a signed menu here of um, someone special who came to visit us in Virginia. Well, actually, he was filming um, a new uh, movie here. <laughs> yeah. So um, what he did was he actually I think he found out through, you know, where are the best burgers in Richmond um, through his driver. Um, so this is what it says. To Brett and Elise, your burgers are amazing, like really, really amazing. I had one every week and I'm going to actually miss them now that I'm leaving. You've spoiled me. Thank you. Daniel Radcliffe, who is Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. 
So we're, we're pretty happy about that. If, if the burgers are good enough for Harry Potter, uh, you can tell your friends. But when you come to the U.S., we won't deliver them like we did for him every week. So uh, that's it on our end. I'm happy to take a few questions if you have any time. Hello, Dan. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Look, we've got uh, two or three minutes. So, uh, so that's a fantastic insight. I'd like to go to the floor for for any questions, and thank goodness we do have some, otherwise I'll be winging it. But um, I'll just pass you over for a question here, Dan. Yeah, hi Dan. My name's William Beacom, I'm a um, farmer just in the North Island. Um, loved what you're doing, I think it's fantastic. My only real question is, is that you're, um, you're leveraging, uh, I suppose, um, our brand, um, our image, everything that we do and work hard here in New Zealand, and I think what you're doing is outstanding. My real question is, is how big is that opportunity in the US? Because I think as farmers, we're missing out on that opportunity. You, you really are. Uh, I think that's a terrific question. You have, uh, you, you can't know, but the, the, uh, the interest in what we're doing with the New Zealand beef and lamb is exploding because it tastes so good and people like everything that you farmers and, and you uh, ranchers are doing with the products. But the scope of the market, you know, I've been doing this for 33 years. Uh, I don't see why the U.S. couldn't have several hundred burger batches. Uh, you know, by, in four months, we'll have five restaurants. Those five restaurants are going to be doing probably close to 60 to 70 tons of beef a year and probably close to 25 or 30 tons of lamb a year. That's with five restaurants in Virginia. So if you ask me what I think the market uh, can bear, I don't think we really know. I know this, uh, we're not gonna have much problem scaling. It's just gonna be strategically, how do you move forward? How do we continue to strengthen and maintain these supplier pipelines? But your opportunity here in the US is exponential, exponential. Can you, can you hear me, Dan, still? No, that's um. Look, that's fantastic. That's um. That's really exciting to hear. That really positive. Um, we've got a few more minutes. Maybe, maybe an opportunity for one last question. Here, here we go. I've got one more from you, and it's from George Tatham, who is uh, one of our directors for Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Yeah, hi Dan. Uh, fantastic presentation. Thank you very much. My question is, uh, you mentioned throughout your presentation the sort of health food focus that Burger Batch has. Just wondered how big is that in the US? Um, you know, it's been identified over here as a huge opportunity for us uh, with the you know global epidemic of uh, obesity, essentially. Um, so how big is that fo uh, focus in the wider US outside of the Burger Batch? It's, it's huge, and it's being driven by the millennials. I'm a boomer. Uh, as boomers, we're paying attention a lot more than we ever did. We're paying attention to our health. We're paying attention to sourcing. The whole culture, and I'll speak specifically to the US, but, but the level of food educated people now is better than I, at any time I've ever seen. So people care about what they eat, they care about where it came from. They care about, is it good for me? The fact that it tastes so good is a bonus, but uh, the health aspect is gonna continue to grow in the United States and it's growing now. And the other critical part is the sustainable farming, the good for you. I talked about us elevating to not just competing with better burgers, but people know there's a big chain here called Five Guys. So they say, well, it's got a burger in the name, so it's Five Guys with draft beer. Well, it isn't. Uh, and of course, what really sets us apart is the New Zealand beef and lamb. But uh, the health aspects are here to stay. There are a few people that aren't that adventurous, but it's by far the minority today. That's, that's, um, that's, that's tremendous, tremendous Dan. Dan. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for that. that. So, so, so I would, um, as we wrap it up there, I would, I would recommend to everyone in the, in the room to go to the Burger Batch. That's got its logistical challenges, so, so we're probably not going to do that until we go to the States. But what I would recommend to everyone is that, um, you know, as farmers, we probably don't get out enough, as I said. So if we want to learn about intelligent indulgers, and if we want to um, supply them with our premium products, and if we want to produce premium products, then, um, then from time to time, we should be prepared to, to go and buy them. So, so let's get amongst some intelligent indulgers, and... Um, 
Also, let's put a few points with our with our partners and our wives and, and take them out. So there's some there's some homework for you all. So so with that, I'd like to wrap up with Dan and um, and if we can all put our hands together and give him a round of appreciation.